In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shosanesti. Christ is risen. Truly is risen. Shosanesti. In this beautiful gospel on Thomas Sunday, we are presented with another person, another figure, in some ways in the same spirit of Holy Week and, and Great Lent, where we encounter these amazing people from the scriptures, and as we encounter them, we look at them, we kind of listen and hear their story, and we try to some degree to see ourselves as them and recognize that their challenges or their struggles are our struggles. And we try to figure out how the Lord would move people forward and as much as he moved them forward would also move us forward, but bring meaning to the situation so that we might find also in our lives some meaning. And so here we have this Thomas, known as the Doubting Thomas, and he's, he's absent when the Lord comes to be with the disciples. And because of his absence, he struggles with that doubt. He wishes he would have been there. He wanted to be there. He wanted to see the things that they saw. And because he did not the first time, he doubted. Then he's brought back in and God gives him the opportunity through his doubt to see him again, to place his finger in his side to see the mark of the nails and so on and so forth. And this disciple, this student, through his doubt and through his questioning, would become a great teacher. And he would proclaim this very, this is one of the, the most critical lines in the scriptures. He says, my Lord and my God. He proclaims the divinity of Christ. It's a very short sentence, but it's a life-giving sentence, a critical, vital sentence to see in the midst of all of the life-giving words of the scriptures. His proclamation is a lesson for us. He's a teacher. He was a student, struggling, inquisitive, even doubting. And through that doubting and struggling, God transformed him to be one of our greatest teachers one who would proclaim to the generations that follow the divinity of Christ. So I want to say a couple things about this gospel. Uh, it's an amazing gospel, and, and there's a lot to be said, but just a couple quick things. The first one is this, that God is patient and long-suffering for us. God is patient and long-suffering for us. You know, we struggle in our relationship with God. Well, I don't know, maybe you don't, but I do at times. And in that struggle... We have to know that God is patient with us as we struggle. He was patient with Thomas in his doubt and his questioning. And he's enduring and abiding and long-suffering in his love for us, even when we go through those moments of doubt and struggles. He literally allows his disciple Thomas to poke him, to prod, like a little child, you know, wanting to, why, why? You know, wanting to ask questions and touch and see to make sense of something that is in many ways beyond, beyond human comprehension and a bit, excuse me, beyond the human ability to comprehend. But God was patient with him. Like a loving father with his child, he allowed him to poke and prod to help him learn. He allowed Thomas to investigate him, to help him learn and to grow. So one thing I want to say about this, that God is patient and long-suffering with us, is that we have to be careful that when we doubt, when the moments come that we doubt, or the moments come when we have questions in our faith, to fight off the great temptation from the evil one to feel some sort of a shame because we have a question. Now, sometimes when we ask questions, we might start to feel shameful, like, oh, you know, I don't really believe. If I really believed, I wouldn't have a question. I wouldn't doubt. That's not what the gospel says today. The gospel says you might have some questions. You might doubt sometimes. You might struggle in your faith sometimes. And God will allow you to come and put your finger in his side so that you might believe. But it doesn't have to be a moment of shame. 
where we get guilty and shameful and, and feel, feel burdened and depressed. That sort of a thing comes from the evil one. He's tempting us to say, oh, well, you saw these wonderful things. How can you not believe? And he's trying to pull you away through this trick. He's trying to pull us away through these tricks of feeling sh unhealthy shame and guilt when we have simply but questions to learn more about that which we could never fully comprehend anyway. Of course we'll have questions. Of course we won't understand everything. God is really big, and we have a finite ability to understand things. Just ask my wife, you know, I'm supposed to do the dishes, and I don't always do it, you know. You see, that was supposed to be funny, you know. We don't always do that which we're supposed to do. But God allows us to draw closer to him through the questions that we ask, right? So fight off that shame. Fight off that guilt. If you, if you ever doubt God or you have questions, don't feel a guilt or a shame, an unhealthy guilt or shame. Know that God allows these questions for our learning, for our growth in Christ, and ultimately for our salvation. To highlight this point, I say just one more thing. You know, Thomas, when he had his question, again, look at Christ's reaction. Christ could have easily been like, you were with me for all, he could have answered cynically. You were with me for all of the miracles. You saw the loaves uh, be multiplied. You saw me heal the blind. You saw me do all these wonderful things. And still you doubt? No, that wasn't the Lord's response. He was, again, he was patient and long-suffering with Thomas. He did not dismiss his questions, but he used it as an opportunity for Thomas, again, to grow in his faith and his understanding of God, to grow in his salvation. This was here to strengthen him. And I said in the, as I said in the beginning, it took that disciple and it made him one of the greatest teachers in human history. My Lord and my God. For us Christians, Christ is the God-man. And it is Thomas's words and in a few other words in the scriptures that bring that clarity of who Christ is. And so we're thankful for Thomas's questions because he has now taught us who Christ is by this beautiful proclamation. So thank God. Thank God for his patience and thank God for his granting us the ability to struggle and learn. Number two, in a very similar point, but just to say something another way. God allows us to wrestle with him. You remember in the Old Testament this famous wrestling that Jacob had with God, and I'll, I'll read it to you. It comes from the book of Genesis. Listen to this. And he rose that night, this is Jacob, and he took his two wives and his maidservants and his eleven sons, and he crossed over the ford of Jabok. He took them and crossed over the brook and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. And this man, of course, was Christ, right? Now when he saw he did not prevail against him, this is Jacob, or excuse me, this is God, when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, that is to say Jacob's hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was dislocated as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have pre prevailed with God and with men. Then Jacob asked, saying, Tell me your name, I pray. And he said, Why do you ask me my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of that place the form of God. He says, For I saw God face to face, and my soul was saved. I saw God face to face, and my soul was saved. How? By wrestling. By experiencing a challenge and a struggle. And wrestling with God, his soul was saved. The wrestling, the struggle, the striving was his salvation. Now there's a lot to say here because... This, this verse in Genesis is, there's a lot to unpack, and we won't unpack it all today. It's beautiful. Christ comes very humbly. He comes in a, weak, in a form of weakness and allows Jacob to wrestle with him. How could we wrestle with God? Right? But Christ came to his level, even lowered himself so much that he would allow Jacob to have some sort of a wrestling match with God. Anyways, we understand it, of course, 
practically but also spiritually that God allows us to wrestle with him in order that through that struggle and that striving we might grow and learn what does that mean in, when the rubber hits the road it means that in our lives we have difficult moments and, and doubts and struggles and challenges that we face and sometimes they can be a couple moments and sometimes they can be a season we can go through spiritual challenges that take months we can go through spiritual challenges that take years we can be to say it clearly and plainly we can be tricked by the evil one so much so that it has major major manifestations and implications in our lives for years but as we struggle and wrestle God will be working our salvation in the process if we would just stay in the in the in the match let's say stay engaged with him keep struggling keep striving keep wrestling it's it's tough sometimes but this is why the great Paul says in so many occasions to run the race and the race is hard to fight the good fight and the fight is hard he encourages us because he knows that we might have seasons that are very difficult very difficult and they can last for some time and they can last for some time this wrestling match with God left Jacob with a limp and there's a lot to be said about that you know he had this little issue in his hip and it left him with a limp look this is hard to say and it's just what it is in our lives we have some wounds you know we've lost loved ones who we care about dearly we face spiritual battles that have given us some scars and some injuries you know we've wounded other people and as we struggle and strive in this great race towards the kingdom of heaven we might be limping a bit we just might be this is the case Jacob limped a bit after this this wrestling here that's okay not so much that we won't have those limps or those wounds or their struggles it's all about staying on track and staying in the race even though we might get a wound or two as we go we might have a bruise we might have some kind of a something to remind us that the struggle has been difficult and has made a little mark on us that's okay God is continuing to help us he's continuing to bring us on this great journey to the kingdom even if we have a limp even if spiritually speaking we have a limp or maybe physically maybe we have some sort of a struggle but the reality is that Jacob kept going and he was stronger for it he was stronger for it even though he had some sort of physical manifestation that brought him maybe a little slower than he was before he was still stronger for it because he kept running the race through the struggle and then he was given this great name Israel God prevails God prevails God prevails in the world and he prevails in our lives right and he helps us run the race so that we can be crowned you know this is an anecdote I've shared before and, and you you remember this anecdote to think about this idea just to flesh out this last thought this idea of wrestling with God you ever see a you ever see and you've probably done it some of you older men uh, or, or grown men you've have you ever wrestled with a young kid before you ever wrestled with a young kid are they gonna are they gonna win that match the men are smiling that's your pride that's why you're smiling that's your pride what if they would beat you no look you've had those wrestling matches with a little child before and you've allowed them to engage right and you met them at their level and you you wrestle with them a bit and then you know the the flowers on the coffee table get knocked over and spilled everywhere and mom said enough no more wrestling right and someone bumped their head or something like this right but that's okay it's part of the process part of the process of growing and learning and engaging and learning how to uh, play the game properly let's say or wrestle properly follow the rules know when enough is enough but to think well the child shouldn't wrestle because they know they're gonna lose what kind of life is that if we only took on in our lives the things that we knew that we could accomplish that would be no life we have to in this great adventure of our faith take on things that are bigger than us I mean, we do it all the time whether we like it or not and we have to learn from a young age that some of the tasks some of the crosses we might have to carry some of the places we're going to be called by God are going to be bigger and more challenging than we could ever imagine so the little child has to wrestle with the adult they have to learn that sometimes they're going to take on something bigger than themselves 
Because that makes them stronger. It makes them realize that we have been called by God to take on big, really big, insurmountable, in fact, things in our lives. We have to be equipped and ready for that. So today, just a couple simple thoughts, and this is a beautiful gospel, and there's so much more to say, but just these two for the day. God is patient and long-suffering with, with us in his love. He loves us, he's patient with us, and he's long-suffering. He does not send Thomas away for his questions or doubt. He brings him closer to himself, and he makes him one of the greatest teachers in history, my Lord and my God, because he was patient with him. And we also have to remember in our life and in our faith, if we struggle and we have doubts and challenges, and sometimes we feel like we're wrestling with God, we don't understand God. Where are you trying to take us? Why are you allowing this to happen in our lives? Sometimes he will allow that wrestling. And all of it, both things, his patience and his love, in this, this, these seasons of time where we might be wrestling, they're all there, not for our punishment, but for our salvation. The struggle, in fact, is, as, as I quoted a, a, a dear brother a couple weeks ago, the struggle is our salvation. The process we go through in these, these difficult times is the process and part and parcel of our salvation. We don't always see the forest through the trees, but the, the forest is made perfectly clear through the trees when we see what Thomas said today. If we only knew his doubt, he'd be dom doubting Thomas. But the church says he's not doubting Thomas. He is believing Thomas. Because, again, he proclaims this greatest line in the scripture, that the Lord is his Lord and God. He is the God-man. Amen.